Hi guys, this is Sadiq from Dropin.com. In this video, we'll show you how to flash the latest BreezeOS ROM on any Android phone. It's a GSI ROM based on Android 16. So with that in mind, please take a backup of all the data on your phone. And let's get started. Your first action is to install the Triple Info app from FDWide. So get the app once you've got it. Now launch the app. And then please go to second tab and verify shown as, you could see the table is shown as supported. If that's all well and good, then let's move on with the next step. Next step, you will now have to open this article in new tab. I'll show you why. In the meantime, just keep it open. And now you get the ROM file. Okay, one very important part. This ROM is not open source as opposed to all the GSI ROM. This is not an open source ROM. If that's fine with you, then get the ROM file from this link. The ROM will have two variants, the ROF and the ext 4 Which one should you download? Well, choice is all yours. ROF is the read-only file system that is optimized for the performance you will the system and the application will load and work much faster in ROFs. So I'm using that only. The choice is all yours. Once you've got the file, it will be in a .exe format. Extract by 7-zip. For extraction, right-click on the file and choose show more options. Then after that, go to 7-zip. Extract to Breeze UI. And you'll get the IMG file over here. As you could see, this is our GSI ROM. So moving on, once you've got the file, your next course of action is to get the Android SDK from my article. Extract them onto a PC. Upon extraction, you will get the following files as you could see over here. So once that is done, your next session is to en enable USB debugging and OEM unlocking. That debugging is required for ADB command and OEM unlocking is required to unlock the phone. So let's enable both the toggles. For that, go to settings, about phone, type on build number or OS version seven times, then go back, go to settings, system, dev options and enable OEM unlocking as well as USB debugging. Once that is complete, let's first verify the debugging connection. For that, type in CMD and add bar of platform tools over here. Hit the enter key. Now type in the command of ADB devices and verify you're having an ID. So as you could see, we are having this ID. If that's all well and good, then your next action is to unlock the phone. For unlocking the pixel, nothing and OnePlus, it's quite easy. Simply use the forward flashing unlock command. You'll get a prompt on your phone. So use the volume key to highlight unlock the bootloader and press the power key to confirm. And that is it. But for all other phone you have a look at my article in case of Xiaomi, Poco, Redmi phones you have to use the me unlock tool or the hyper OS exploit for hyper OS 1 and 2 use the hyper OS exploit which is given in this article in case of Samsung phones you have to boot the phone to download mode then long press the volume up key to go to device unlock mode then once again press the volume up key to unlock the phone apart from that in Realme phone you have to use the in-depth test APK file in Moto phone you have to give the email to the Motorola after having an unlock code so Find the unlock code for your phone, then send it to Motorola and they, they will share the uh, unique unlock code with you. Use that unlock code to unlock your phone. And that is just about it. Once you unlock the phone, your next action is to transfer the file of GSI inside platform tools. So let's do it. This is the file from here. Copy it and paste it here. Let's do a renaming or you may leave it as it is. It's fine as well. Not a major issue. The name is fine. Now you have to get the file of BB Meta from the same firmware which is there onto your phone. So have a look at the, the build number or the OS version and get the exact same firmware. So first off, let's talk ab about the Xiaomi phones. For that, get the fastboot ROM, extract by 7-zip, you'll get the .tgz format. Again, when extraction, you'll get a tar file. Again, extract the tar file and you'll get the required VBMeta file. So for the sake of reference, let me show you. So it should be here only, just give me a second. So this is the file of POCO F5, as you could see. The same build number 2040 VMRNXM. So go inside the folder, images folder, and then get the file of BB Meta over here. Paste the file inside platform tools. In case of nothing phone, you could get the factory image from the GitHub page, which I will link in my article. Then extract the file and you will get the required VB Meta file from here. As you could see, for Pixel phones, get the factory image extracted. Go to the image folder, extract that as well. You will get the file. In case of OnePlus, Realme, and Oppo, you may extract the payload bin file via Firewood Enhanced Tool, launch the Enhanced Tool, then go to the Partition tab, Payload Dumper, click on Browse, choose the file of Payload Bin, then click on Open Extract, the file will be extracted. So once that is done, you have now got the file of VB Meta as well. Transfer the file inside Platform Tools, and as of now, both the file of VB Meta and the GSI should be there inside Platform Tools. If that's all well and good, now boot the phone to Fastboot mode. For that, type in the command of ADB, Reboot, Boot Loader, and hit enter. The phone should now be in the fastboot mode in a few seconds. Once that is the case, your next action is to type in the command of fastboot devices. 
and verify that you are having a serial ID. So let's see. In our case, you could see we are having this ID. If that's all well and good, then let's move on to the next step. But if you're not having this ID, in that case, you have to install the fastboot drivers onto your PC. The link for the same is given in my article. Go through my article and install the fastboot drivers from here. And after that, do a right click on the Windows icon, choose device manager, expand the Android phone section and verify your phone is shown here. Let me show you my phone is shown here. If that's all good, then first of all, you have to turn off the Android verified boot. So simply copy this command, flash the file of VBMeta. This will turn off the Android verified boot with ease. Hit and that is complete. Now boot the phone to fastboot D mode. For that, type in the command of fastboot, reboot fastboot. The phone should now be in the fastboot D mode in just a few seconds. Hit enter key and the fastboot D screen will vary depending on the phone which you are using. In my case, it's the Zomi phone. You just see a fastboot D on my phone. That's it. On In the Pixel phone, you will see a new screen of fastboot D. So this will vary depending on the OEM. That's not a cause of any concern. Moving on, let's first move the, the product A partition to make space for the GSI ROM. So copy the entire command and paste the command in the CMD window, hit the enter key. Once that is complete, let's now flash the GSI ROM, type in the command of fastboot flash, partition name which is a system partition, file name which is system.img, hit the enter key. The flashing will now start, take only a few seconds. So let's wait. Okay, one more thing. You could see we have removed the product A slot and the file is being flashed in the A slot as well. So if that's all fine, but in some cases, the file might get flashed in the slot B. In that case, you have to remove the product B slot as well. Just remove the B A from the end and replace it with B, type in product B and that is it. So whenever you are flashing a file, it's being flashed in the B slot and you are removing the slot A. In that case, you have to remove the slot B as well. So keep this one in mind. For now, there's no issue because you removed the A slot and the file is being flashed in the A slot only. So it's all fine. With that said, it will take just a few more seconds for the file to flash. Let's wait for that to complete. So guys, the flashing is now complete. Let's now do a factory reset. Type in fastboot space dash w, hit the enter key. And it's now done as well. Now type in the command of fastboot reboot. And the phone should now boot to the OS. But the first booting up will take up some time. Around 30 to 40 seconds. That's all normal, nothing to worry about. And let's keep a tab on the boot logo or the boot animation, which should now appear in time soon. And that will signify that the flashing has been done successfully. So let's see what is the case now. In just a few more seconds, we should be having the boot animation, after which the phone will take some more time to boot to the OS. So it's just a waiting game we have to play right now. You might also see a white screen. Okay, that's not the case in our phone. That's great to see. And we have got the boot animation. And now it might take a little bit more longer. So let's wait for that to complete. So guys, the booting is now complete. Let's get started. If you want, you may connect to Wi-Fi, link your Google account and restore all the app data as well. For now, I'm skipping all of that because that will take ages. So let's just accept the terms and condition and skip this as well. System navigation settings. That is it. We are now inside the OS. It has a few pre-installed Google apps. Google Photos. Okay, I don't know which photo app is this. It's not Google Photos. Something similar to that, but it's not Google Photos. Okay, then apart from that, Gemini app is there, files by Google, so there are a few Google app. Then you may change the settings from here, the travel info, as you might be aware. All of the settings are given here. The Qualcomm settings, Zomi settings, Qualcomm settings are here. Then you have the those settings as well. Display tweaks are given here. Okay, regarding this, I am in an article on how to fix various GSI issues. If you come across any of the issue, just open my article from this section over here and you will see how to fix the issue with regard to the, let me show you the fix the issue with regards to the 5G SMS, Bluetooth calls, 90 hertz display, fingerprint, brightness, WhatsApp, double tattoo, wake and so on. So all the tweaks are from this page only. So first have a look at my article and then only get the job done. Then UI tweaks are here as well. Apart from that, telephone, IMS, 4G, 5G settings are here. Camera settings are given in this page. So please have only interact with this toggle. Use them only if you know what you are doing. Otherwise, it might lead to some negative consequences. So leave them as they are if you are not sure. Now let's have a look at the okay. This looks quite nice. Transparency effect is there. The new QS toggles are there as well. Settings menu is over here. Let's have a look at display. Dark theme, pure, pure black is there. Okay, welcome move. I just love the black themes, colors, rotation settings, smooth display on. 
120 hertz for most of the display will lead to some more battery drainage but that's fine for me then double tap to wake and tap to sleep tap to sleep is working tap to wake is currently not okay it might not work from here it might work from from this section travel app xiaomi settings dt2w double tap to wake and now let me see if it's working or not yeah now it's working well and good so apart from that what all is there let's access the system section which is here buttons back long action home long action let me show you any one of the tweaks let's say back long action to launch the camera app well back long press action key currently it's not working i guess a ui restart is required let me see home long press to let's try it from here so i guess a ui restart is required in the meantime let's see anything else search assistant via the double tab action key let's leave that for now power menu advanced restart is there as well and we have the option to restart to the system recovery and fast boot system ui is not there which i wanted right now but it's not there not a major cause of concern wake device reorient show panels on the left hand side the volume panel will not be on the left opposed to the right hand side as you could see then you have the system profile status bar tweaks system icons show hide the icons from here clock positioning show seconds as well em pm battery style circle battery percentage as well as required next to the icon brightness slider is fine gestures double press the power button to open the camera navigation mode i want the gesture navigation now it's fine circle to search is there as well let me see currently i'm offline but it should work well some of these features i guess will only work after the restart navigation you could see circle to search all of these features for the ui tweaks might require a ui restart but the system ui is not given as a restart option you could see you have to do a os restart but that will take a lot of time let's skip this for now but the feature is there thankfully then apart from that the treble is the same as before which we have seen now let's have a look at the wallpaper and style section which is uh, over here you may change the theme from this section or from here social light theme or back to dark theme then apart from that you may go to the home screen and change the enable theme icons or change the average size let's use 5 cos 5 for now and it's not changed the rest of the tweaks are not here for that you have to access this app only which is the treble app so go there then go to user interface and from here you might do the changing if for the icon color green white or cyan so we'll see the fingerprint icon colors accent color default icon shape okay default icon pack well 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 nothing as such okay the research system is given over here this option is given here cannot run okay for this you have to do a require a rooted phone i don't know why a root is required for system ui restart that's something strange anyways that's not out in our right now we cannot do this right now but there were no tweaks over there apart from that let me see if any tweaks are here or not in the home settings so settings allow so let's do a restart at the very end now and see if the features are working or not let me now see circle to search well i don't know what's the case why they are not working even right now so this is a cause of minor concern but there is some issue with these tweaks in the next build i suppose this should be fixed but for now it's not working as you can see from here anyways guys that's all from this video it's a clean stock ui experience with just the required features and there isn't any major tweaks which is quite ob obvious because it's a clean stock experience it has a black theme it looks quite nice and i guess that's just about it if you have any query let me know in the comment section and thanks a lot for watching